Hi everyone, I'm Trish and welcome to my women's online Bible study. Today we're covering 1 Samuel chapters 10 through 12. So let's say a short prayer and dive right in. Heavenly Father, please give me clarity to speak and the hearer the ear to hear. Please impart on us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of all your ways that we may walk upright before you. Help us to share your word with others in clarity and in its truth. And please help us to remember to put on the armor of God each day. Those things found for us in Ephesians chapter starting at, um, in chapter six, starting at verse 10. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So grab your Bibles and turn with me to first Samuel chapter 10. Uh, uh, well, starting from chapter 10 and I am reading from the New King James Version. So then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, This is not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance. Is it not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance? When you have departed from me today, you will find two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin at Zelzah. And they will say to you, The donkeys which you went to look for have been found. And now your father has ceased caring about the donkeys and is worrying about you, saying, what shall I do about my son? And you shall go on forward from there and come to the Terebinth tree of Tabor. There are three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you. One carrying three, goat, three young goats, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall receive from their hands. After that, you shall come to the hill of God, where the Philistine garrison is. And it will happen when you have come there to the city that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a stringed instrument, a tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them. And they will be prophesying. Then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you and will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. And let it be when these signs come to you that you do as the occasion demands for God is with you. You shall go down before <laughs> you shall go down before me to Gilgal, and surely I will come down to you to offer burnt offerings and make sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days you shall wait till I come to you, and you shall. I'm sorry. Till I come to you and show you what you should do. So it was when he had turned back when he had turned his back to go from Samuel that God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. When they came there to the hill, there was a group of prophets to meet him. And the spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied among them. And it happened when all who knew him formerly said that he indeed prophesied among the prophets, that the people said to one another, what is this that has come upon the son of Kish? And Saul also among the prophets, then a man from there answered and said, but who is their father? Therefore, it became a proverb. It saw also among the prophets. And when they had finished prophesying, he went up to the high place. Then Saul, then Saul's uncle said to him and his servant, where did you go? So he said to look for the donkeys. When we saw that they were nowhere to be found, we went to Samuel. And Samuel's uncle said, tell me, please, what Saul said to you. So Saul said to his uncle, he told us plainly that the donkeys had been found, but about the matter of the kingdom, he did not tell him what Samuel had said. Then Samuel called the people together to the Lord at Mizpah and said to the children of Israel, thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up, I brought, I brought up Israel out of Egypt and delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of all the kingdoms from those and from those who oppressed you. But you have today rejected your God who himself served you, who himself saved you from all your adversaries and your tribulations. And you have said to him, no, set a king over us. Now, therefore, present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your clans. And when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was chosen. When he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the family of Matri was chosen. And Saul, the son of Kish, was chosen. But when they saw him, he could not be found. <laughs> Therefore, they inquired of the Lord further, 
has the man come here yet? And the Lord answered, there he is hidden among, hidden among the equipment. So they ran and brought him from there. And when he stood among the people, he was taller than any of the people from his shoulders upward. And Samuel said to all the people, so all the people shouted out and said, long live the king. Then Samuel explained to the people the behavior of royalty and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. And Saul also went home to Gibeah. And valiant men went with him, whose hearts God had touched. But some rebels said, how can this man save us? So they despised him and brought him no presents, but he held his peace. First Samuel 11 then Nahash the Am Ammonites came up and encamped against uh, Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said to Nahash, make a covenant with us and we will serve you. And Nahash the Am Ammonites answered them, on this condition, I will make a covenant with you that I may put out all your right eyes and bring reproach on all Israel. Then the elders of Jabesh said to him, hold off for seven days that we may send messengers to all the territory of Israel. And then, if there is no one to save us, we will come out to you. So the messengers came to Gibeah of Saul and told the news in the hearing of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and wept. Now there was Saul coming behind the herd from the field. And Saul said, what troubles the people and they weep, that, they weep, that they weep? And they told him the words of the men of Jabesh. Then the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard this news and his anger was greatly aroused. So he took a yoke of oxen and cut them in pieces and sent them throughout all the territory of Israel by the hand of messengers saying, whoever does not go out with Saul and Samuel to battle, so it shall be done to his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people and they came out with one consent. When he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were 300,000. The men of Judah, 30,000. And they said to the messengers who came, Thus you shall say to the men of Jabesh Gilead, Tomorrow by the time the sun is hot, you shall have help. And the messengers came and reported it to the men of Jabesh that they were glad, and they were glad. Therefore the men of Jabesh said, Tomorrow we will come out to you, and you may do with us whatever seems good to you. So it was on the next day that Saul put the people in three companies, and that they came into the midst of the camp in the morning watch, and killed Ammonites until the heat of the day. And it happened that those who survived were scattered so that no two of them were left together. Then the people said to Samuel, who is he who said, shall Saul reign over us? Bring that man that he may be put to death. But Saul said, not a man shall be put to death this day for today the Lord has accomplished salvation in Israel. Then Samuel said to the people, come, let us go to Gilgal and renew the kingdom there. So the people, so all the people went to Gilgal and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. There they made sacrifices of peace offerings uh, before the Lord. And there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly. First uh, Samuel 12. Now Samuel said to all Israel, Indeed, if I have heeded your voice in all that you said to me and have made a king over you, and now here is the king walking before you, and I am old and gray-headed, and look, my sons are with you. I have walked before you from my childhood to this day. Here I am. Witness against me before the Lord <clears throat> and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken, or whose donkey have I taken, or whom have I cheated? Whom have I oppressed, or for, whom, for whose hand have I received any bribe with which to blind my eyes? I will restore it to you. And they said, you have not cheated us or oppressed us, nor have you taken anything from any man's hand. Then he said to them, the Lord is witness against you and his, anoint <laughs> and his anointed is witness this day that you have not found anything in my hand. And they answered, he is witness. Then Samuel said to the people, uh, is this the Lord who raised up Moses and Aaron and who brought, it is the Lord, sorry. It is the Lord who raised up Moses and Aaron and who brought, your fathers up from the hand from the land of Egypt. Now therefore stand still, that I may reason with you and before the Lord concerning all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did to you and your fathers, when Jacob had gone into Egypt, and your fathers cried out cried out to the Lord. 
Then the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, who brought your fathers out of the out of Egypt and made them dwell in this place. And when they fought the Lord their God, when they forgot the Lord their God, he sold them into the hand of Sisera, commander of the army of Hazor, into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab. And they fought against them. Then they cried out to the Lord and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and served the Baals and Ashtoreths. But now deliver us from the hand of our enemies and we will serve you. And the Lord sent Jerubbabel, Bedan, Jephthah, and Samuel and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side. And you have dwelt in safety. Uh, and when you saw that Nahash, king of the Ammonites, came against you, you said to me, No, but a king shall reign over us when the Lord your God was your king. Now, therefore, he is the king whom you have chosen and whom you have desired. And take note, the Lord has set a king over you. If you fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and do not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then both you and the king who reigns over you will continue following the Lord your God. However, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then the hand of the Lord will be against you. And it was and it as it was against your fathers. Now, therefore, stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Is today not the wheat harvest? I will call to the Lord and he will send thunder and rain that you may perceive and see that your wickedness is great, which you have done in the sight of the Lord and asking a king for yourself. So Samuel called to the Lord and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. And all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. And all the people said to Samuel, pray for your servants to the Lord, your God, that we may not die for we have added to all our sins and evil of acting a king for ourselves. Then Samuel said to the people, do not fear. You have done all this wickedness yet. Do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart and do not turn aside from then. For then you will go after empty things which cannot profit or deliver, for they are nothing. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. Moreover, as for me, far be it for me that I should send against the Lord in season to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart, for consider what great things he has done for you. But if you do so, but if you still do wickedly, you shall be swept away, both you and your king. Heavenly Father, please bless the reading of your word and uh, let it fill us up until we are able to eat of it again. If you're just here for scripture read through, thank you for coming to read through scripture with me. I really appreciate it. I hope it's a means of blessing to you and I hope to see you again next time. And if you're here for a more in-depth Bible study, stick around and we will dive right in. Okay, so we are picking up here in 1 Samuel uh, with the institution of the first king of Israel. Um, Samuel is, uh, he. let's just go right into it. Um, in 10, Samuel actually... Um, pours a, takes a flask of oil and anoints Saul king over Israel. And um, just because the Lord God granted the people's wish on requesting a king, it does not mean that the Lord does not still reign over Israel um, at this time. Um, he reigns over all his creation and he puts in power whom he wills. Uh, and sometimes it is to punish a nation and sometimes it is to, um, uh, for blessings. Uh, but uh, God is sovereign and um, he reigns over all his creation. Um, so I just wanted to add that uh, bit of information. Information. <laughs> I was having a toothache and so um, maybe that's why I'm stumbling over my words. I, I don't know. It could be that I'm rusty though. Uh, but anyhow, um, so yeah, 10 covers the anointing of uh, Saul. The Lord changes his heart. Um, he, uh, Samuel anoints Saul king and he, uh, the Lord gives him a different heart. And uh, Saul at this point is able to prophesy after his heart is changed. Um, and he uh, is now a uh, servant of the Lord. He is the first king over Israel. And then that pretty much sums up uh, chapter 10. So moving into chapter 11, uh, where Saul saves uh, Jabesh. Gilead, um, he uh, he has this new heart where he uh, wants to do uh, the commands of the Lord, 
early on, Saul is doing okay in his walk with the Lord. Um, and he calls out the men to come to war. There is someone actually who says that, some people actually who say, oh, Saul won't be our king. Um, and then after they um, win back Jabesh Gilead, um, uh, they want to put those people to death, that man to death who said those things. But Saul um, is showing kindness and saying, hey, no one will be put to death um, for uh, the Lord has delivered us uh, this day uh, and salvation. Uh, yeah, the Lord has accomplished salvation in Israel. Let's just do the direct quotes there in 11 and 13. Um, and so... Um, that, that's pretty much it. They they make some peace sac some peace sacrifice offerings to the Lord, and um, Saul is being established in uh, as king over Israel. And then uh, chapter twelve covers Samuel Samuel's address uh, to the people of Israel at Saul's coronation as uh, king, uh, and Samuel is just saying to the people that he walked upright since he was a child. We know that Samuel was a blessing. Uh, his mom was barren and that she gave him uh, to the Lord to serve. And he, he, he he's saying, hey, I've served for you as judge over Israel since I was a youth. And now he's old and gray headed and he hasn't done anything wrong. Samuel was a good guy. He walked up right in the, in the Lord from his youth until uh, he was an old man. The people all agree and say, yes, you were, uh, you know, you reigned rightly over us. You, you were a great judge. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, that's pretty much it. Chapter 12 is the coronation. Um, Samuel covers his, um, uh, his walk with the Lord, that he was an upright servant. And then he goes into a recap, uh, from the time of Moses and Aaron, when the Lord delivered the children of Israel from the hands of the Egyptian and up until this point in time where they asked for a king um and uh they asked the lord to uh i'm sorry they asked samuel to pray to the lord um for this wicked thing and asking for a king um that the lord forgive them the lord does heed their voice and establish uh kings over the children of israel and uh and he writes the way uh, I think that I think he actually covered that, and I'm just now remembering it in, a, in an earlier chapter that he does write the ways of the king uh, in a book. Uh, uh, I, yeah, definitely was. Uh, I'm just now re recalling that uh, those were covered. <laughs> that was covered, uh, which uh, we have the, a lot of that information with us in scripture now. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. So Samuel prays for the people, um, uh, 20, verse 23, chapter 12 and 23, it says, moreover, as for me, far be it for me that I should sin against the Lord in season to pray for you. So isn't it a good thing to have a leader who will continuously pray for you? Um, so we should be praying for each other. I definitely pray for those people who view uh, my video and um, just, you know, whoever you're sharing it with um, and you guys could be uh, praying for me uh, too. Just looking uh, forward throughout uh, 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 the rest of Samuel and into the kings. It's just going to pretty much cover the works actually of the kings and prophets. And, and it does cover uh, the people, but mostly like wicked kings or, or good kings and, and their personal lives and their walks is kind of what we're going into here. Um, so uh, I definitely look, look forward to getting into um, those uh, stories about those kings because the next king we have up is the famous well-known David um, and we can dive into uh, his life but right now we are covering Saul and so far Saul is doing uh, pretty good uh, as the first king of Israel uh, and that's pretty much it guys so thank you for coming to uh, read through study scripture with me I really appreciate it I hope it's a means of blessing to you as it is to me and I'll see you again next time may the Lord bless you and keep you may he make his face to shine upon you and bring you peace both now and forever till next time